Hey guys, I'm Dr. Shahid, and in this video, we will cover everything you need to know about endoperio lesions. As you can imagine, the pulp and vascularity of the tooth is something that we need to keep closed off to bacteria, but sometimes we can get communication of the pulp and the periodontium. This can happen through dental tubules, it can happen through lateral and accessory canals, and the distinction here is that lateral canals, guys, are located in the coronal or middle third of the root, whereas accessory canals are in the apical third of the tooth. You can also get communication through furcation canals, and finally, through the apical foramen itself. Okay, so what do we need to know about this? Well, firstly, keep in mind broadly that periodontal disease can cause endodontic pathosis, but to be honest, guys, it's pretty rare. It only really happens if the tooth apex is involved. And I'm sure you guys have seen many periodontally compromised teeth that are doing just fine endodontically. So this is a rare occurrence because usually teeth get extracted long before the time it takes a periodontal lesion to reach the tooth apex. Second, endodontic pathosis can cause periodontal disease. This is a little bit more common because unlike the relatively slow moving periodontal lesions in bone, bacteria, once they're in the pulp, can travel to the apex rather quickly and they can begin to cause periodontal issues. Lastly, I want you guys to keep in mind that periodontal treatment, such as routine scaling and root planing, can affect pulpal health in that it can expose dentinal tubules to fluid and bacterial penetration, which can then cause thermal sensitivity and subsequent pulpitis. And I'm sure you guys have experienced this as well, but generally, it's common for patients to report heightened sensitivity after SRP. All right, with all of that said, let's quickly review the categories of endoperial lesions. So these are all situations where the tooth presents with both an endodontic and periodontal lesion, and we're kind of left to figure out, okay, which happened first, the endo lesion or the perio lesion? Or did they really happen simultaneously? Because sometimes that does happen. Okay, let's trace the progression of what happens when we are dealing with an endoperio lesion that had a primary endo beginning. In these situations, the tooth will obviously test non-vital since we are dealing with a primary endodontic lesion. And the inflammatory processes will lead to a periodontal lesion. So looking at this depiction, we can see that the inflammatory process may or may not be localized at the apex. It certainly can be, and that is a common presentation, but it may also occur along the lateral aspects of the root or in the frication. In any case, if the lesion is left to its own devices, it will at some point form a sinus tract along the PDL space, which will appear as a narrow, deep pocket. Treatment for an endoperial lesion of primary endo origin is simple, root canal therapy. And that makes sense, guys, right? Because the primary lesion was of endodontic origin and it merely manifested through the PDL. So if we fix the primary lesion, the secondary periodontal lesion will heal all by itself. An endoperial lesion with primary periodontal origin will present with inflammation that starts in the sulcus and migrates to the apex due to deposits of plaque and calculus, which leads to a loss of surrounding alveolar bone. So no surprise here, but generally speaking, teeth that fit this criteria present as a vital tooth and with a broad based pocket, because since the periodontal lesion started first, it has had more time to develop and be destructive to the periodontium. So instead of the narrow deep pocket seen in the primary endo variety we just talked about, the primary perio variety has a broad deep pocket. And the treatment for this is good old periodontal therapy. Now you may be asking yourself, well, if the periodontal lesion makes its way all the way to the apex and affects the pulp, won't the pulp become necrotic? And you would be absolutely right. That situation can and does happen if a primary perio lesion is left to develop long enough. When that happens, we say that we are dealing with a primary periodontal lesion with secondary endodontic involvement. And that's really just a fancy way of saying that the periodontal disease progressed until pulpal involvement was possible, and that led to the necrotic pulp. So for treatment, we must take care of the endodontic problem first, followed by periodontal therapy. All right, last but not least, the true combined endoperio lesion describes a situation where the two processes seem to have begun independent of each other, and they coalesce, and clinically, they become indistinguishable. In other words, in these cases, you really can't tell what came first. It's kind of like the chicken or the egg analogy, but with teeth. 
As for the treatment of the condition, we really have to treat both perio and endo at the same time for optimal healing. And the prognosis of our treatment really depends on how much of the destruction was caused by the periodontal component. Because if you think about it, teeth with these true combined lesions and long-standing periodontitis have probably had so much clinical attachment loss that their prognosis almost becomes hopeless. Okay, let's reinforce everything we just learned with a practice problem. This practice problem in particular has a patient box. We have a 37-year-old male with a chief complaint of pain when biting on the left side. The background and patient history reveals really no relevant information, and the current findings show that we have a deep pocket on the mesial surface of the lower left second molar, and we have a negative response to thermal testing. Okay, so the question is, diagnosis of the lower left second molar reveals primary periodontal lesion with secondary endodontic involvement, which is the most appropriate next step? Pause the video if you need. We just went over this. And drum roll. Okay, the answer is B, endodontic treatment. And really, guys, here, the patient box is not that telling. The biggest information for us to take away is what's given in the question itself. The question itself tells us directly that we have a primary periodontal lesion with secondary endodontic involvement. So automatically, that tells us that once the pulp has been infiltrated by bacteria and we have an endodontic involvement, we have to treat the endodontic lesion first. So the answer becomes B, endodontic treatment. All right, guys, that's it for this video. See you next time. Mm -hmm.